Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to be raising this section in here and working on this back wall section. Uh, eventually, that lower track is inside of a tunnel, so we need to model that before it all gets covered. Before we get started, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. And if you like the videos that I put out, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Jensen Trains. All right, well, we have a lot to do today, so let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is make a paper pattern for the first level. And then once we get the first level put in there, we'll have to put a road at a slant that gets us up to that level. In the back, we're going to have to put, um, cut more styrofoam that is basically a loading dock that's raised. And then these structures that are in the back will be put on top of that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The first thing, let's just focus on getting this center area raised up. And you'll notice I have four footprints of structures that go in here. And they're spaced so that there are roads um, that go in between it. So we travel uphill to the first level, then uphill to the second level, and then it'll go up to a third level. To make our pattern, I cut strips of paper. And I'll lay these around the edge of the area that I want and tape it all together with regular tape. And then I'll lay that pattern onto a sheet of styrofoam and cut it out. All right, now we need to make a pattern because we're gonna put raised concrete on both sides of this track. I know this probably doesn't make sense right now, but this is going to be a tunnel back here. Um, and it goes all the way over to about the middle of that brick building right there. All right, well, as you can see, I've been playing with boxes. <laughs> I just wanted to give you an idea of what this is going to look like. Now, the two tall boxes in the back, uh, the first one here that says Prime on it is going to be this, City Apartments. Then the tall one next to it will be this, Ashmore Hotel. So those two sit in the back. Then we have these two boxes here. And the first one is Metzger building from Foscale Models. And then next to it is Watcher Apartments, also from Foscale Models. And then next to it, we have another uh, brick structure. Now the whole back side is on street level up on the, the second level. And then there'll be tall buildings all in the background and along the back wall there. And then that street actually runs around in front of that brick building and the street runs all the way over. So there'll be cars up there with um, more tall uh, brick structures 
all up there. And then that takes us over to this corner. So that platform or street is up here. So it'll come out and go in and then there'll be brick structures up here. And then I'll have a street that comes in from the edge, goes over and then cuts through and goes in front of that building right there alongside of it crosses the track and goes all the way down all right real quick i wanted to go over what i use to cut styrofoam now you get your basic uh utility knife here are the replacement blades and you get three in a pack and you can see using the full length that is more than enough to cut through um, and then sandpaper to shape it then uh, my favorite is this right here and it goes inside of of this I never use this I just buy these blades and just use it like that. And here's some more blades. Uh, these are rougher. And this one's a little smoother. Then you can use different files to, to shape it. So to make a cut like this, I would first saw it this direction and make that line then come in from the side and probably start at the top and then slowly go down at an angle to make that cut now they also sell hot wire tools um i don't own one uh, the only hot wire tool I own is my uh, table, my hot wire Proxon, which is the uh, table cutter. But they make handheld ones um, that work great. Uh, I've just never owned one. So I'll show you quick on this. So I would first cut this way doesn't matter go as deep as you want to then with this one saw it just draw your line on there with a sharpie so that you have a line to follow and then saw it and then break that off all right next we need to get the track glued in place so we're going to remove everything that we put on here and then i'm going to take a marker and draw just trace the track i'll put a line on both sides of the ties all the way around then i'll use uh, liquid nails and smear on a thin bead right down the center so i'll just lift it up slightly smear it underneath it and then lay it in place and i'll probably run the train back and forth over it to make sure that it's nice and smooth and um, glued in place properly
Okay, the track is all glued in place. As you saw, I ran my train back and forth. Uh, it runs smooth, and I did even glue in some individual ties uh, where there were some spaces. Um, so everything looks great. We'll just let this dry a little bit longer. And what we need to do is airbrush a base color of a brown on all of the track. Then I'll paint some individual ties and then paint the edge of the rail a rust color. I've mentioned it before, but I have a video called Laying Track on a Curve. And uh, if you're new to the channel, go back and watch that video. What I do is I stagger my joints so they're not directly across from each other. So one joint can be back here and the other joint is, you know, up here somewhere. That gives you a really nice curve and your track doesn't kink at all. Okay, while we're waiting for our track to dry, I want to go over my workshop with you. Um, I finally have got it all cleaned up again. Uh, and let me share with you three key points to having a successful shop. And it's really strictly my opinion, but I think there are three important things. The first is having a designated home for everything. Now, the designated homes may change. Uh, for example, if you're at your workbench and your wood stains are all over here and you're constantly going back and forth because you use wood stains a lot, then you're going to want to move those closer to you. So as you spend more time in your shop and find out what you use more often than other items, uh, will tell you sort of how to come up with those designated homes. Um, number two, having everything visible. Uh, clear plastic containers, pegboard. I can see everything that I have in my shop. Once you start putting things in boxes, even if it's labeled on the outside of the box, if you put stuff in that box, label it and put it under your workbench or under a table, eventually you will forget about it. And you'll end up spending more money because you'll be buying things that you forgot that you had. Number three is keeping your shop well stocked. Um, this is a hard one, even for me, but don't let your glue run out before you go buy more glue. <laughs> so uh, maybe keep a list on your workbench of things that you're running low on, uh, you know, exacto blades, glue, just keep a list so that you don't run out. Now, these three things that I just mentioned are all important, in my opinion, to stay inspired. If you walk into your shop and it's clean and you can see everything in it, it's easy to be inspired to start a project. If you're working on a project and you need glue or a knife, you know exactly where to go in your shop to find those things, which allows you to stay inspired on the project. And nothing kills your inspiration more than having to leave your home to go get something that you ran out of. So keeping everything stocked up um, allows you to stay inspired. So I guess really that is the key is to stay inspired and keep that inspiration level high so that you can walk into your shop at any time and instantly dive into a project or work on your layout or finish something that maybe you put off for a long time uh, because you can see everything that's in your shop, you know where to go to find it and you know it's in stock. So you're gonna be able to get a lot accomplished using those three tips. Okay, so I've cleared everything off and I took some just lined notebook paper and covered some areas where I don't want overspray. 
So let's start airbrushing. And we're going to be using a color called Earth Brown. This is just going to be our base coat. Um, the back side is not too important. We'll definitely cover it. Uh, but we'll definitely focus more on the track out here that's real visible. And after we get our base coat on, then I'll go in with maybe two or three other shades of brown, just with a fine paintbrush, and just paint some individual ties. Now, before we get started, make sure that you have everything that you need for the project. So we have our paint, um, clean water, and a brush in case the end of the airbrush gets a little clogged we can just wipe the end of it and it's all clean uh, we have paper towels um, i like to keep a clamp in case i'll show you so it's not clamped but if you need to leave and <laughs> use the restroom or um, say the doorbell rings and I have to answer the door um, I can leave that here and I know that it's not going to tip over okay so I've got everything that I need let's pour in our paint and get started an eyedropper would work better for this but I'm just adding water to it uh, to thin it a little bit so that it goes a little further. Okay, so the airbrush is all clean. Uh, I cleaned the top of the rail. Next, we're gonna add some value to the ties and I'm gonna use bittersweet chocolate, iced coffee in medium gray. Now, just real quick, I'm going over two of them, then a single one, skipping three, doing a single. Then we'll just take uh, iced coffee. Maybe we'll switch to a smaller brush. It really doesn't take that long. It goes pretty fast. You just don't want to develop a pattern. You want it to look really random. Our base color, that earth brown, is actually a good rust color. I don't think I'll have to paint the side of the rail, so I think it's done. Now, we'll take our medium gray and I'm not doing a thick, solid coat. I'm just brushing over some of the ties, not even trying to do it even, just letting some of the base colors show through. Some are heavier, some are lighter. Now on areas that are really close to the edge where people will be viewing it and possibly photographing it, take a number two pencil You probably can't see on camera, but it puts, it makes the um, nail heads shiny. 
and puts that graphite from the pencil on it. Now, this is a pretty cool trick. Really adds some realism to it. Take a wet brush, just dip it in the water, wipe the side of the inside of the uh, black paint. It's just black paint. Then, over your blade, And it's adding black little specks. Now before I did this, I'm sorry, I, uh, <laughs> I forgot to film it, but I did a little bit of dry brushing, not much at all, just a little bit. And it is a uh, light sand. Just did a little bit on this curve and a little bit over the bridge. That was it. Now, another cool thing is you can take your X-Acto knife. Mine's got black paint on it. And you can put nicks in the ties. And the dark brown, the dark brown plastic actually shows through. And it looks really cool. I'll take the camera off and show you. Don't forget to do the other side. <laughs> you don't want to just make them go in one direction. You want them to look very random. Do the ends. All right, let me show you up close. All right, now that our track is done, let's get back to working in this corner. Now, I would have much rather preferred this was cut out of pink or blue styrofoam, but I didn't have any that was this thin, and so I just used this. Um, what I'm gonna do though, uh, I, I just don't like the texture of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple coats of Mod Podge over the top of it and then maybe a couple thick coats of gray paint over it just so that you don't see that beaded texture. And then uh, we'll get that all glued in place with liquid nails and then we have to ballast all the track on this back curve. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is get a couple good coats put on our styrofoam with the Mod Podge.
So the Mod Podge is all dry. And now we're going to paint it gray. Well, this is where we're at so far. The brick walls will continue and curve around. And then we'll probably have either a brick wall or a concrete wall on this side. And then there'll be steel girders that go up on both sides and then connect for sort of the roof and then a top gets put on it so this is all in the tunnel so next week we'll finish weathering our concrete and then we need to add ballast all throughout here All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, but we got a lot done, and this is very exciting. I love working on the city side of the layout. Uh, like I'd mentioned, there's going to be a lot of concrete, a lot of tall brick structures, um, and, of course, it'll all be dirty and grimy just like the rest of the layout. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And a real special thank you to all of my Patreons. Uh, your support truly means a lot to me. All right, well, until next week, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.